All right, so ready to start the build of this 1986 or 87 kit, 87 right there, 1987 Testers MiG-37, lovely kit. So as always with, with most uh, aircraft, the first step is gonna be putting together the cockpit. Now I just happen to have some extra Edward photo etch, color photo etch from an A4M Skyhawk, which, you know, just might work out at least some of it, you know, to, to kind of detail out the cockpit here, because like I said, during the actual kit review, there is, there is just not a lot of detail going on inside this thing for us to work with. See this uh, instrument panel right there? I mean, almost nothing. Um, and on the sides of the cockpit tub, it's really not much better. So if we can just take this off, anything that we can add to it helps out. Um, there's almost there's almost nothing there. So I think that the side panels for the A4 will work pretty well. I think that we can maybe trim some of the uh, the instruments down to work. I mean, a little bit anyway. Who knows what, I mean, it's, you know, the plane never actually existed, so nobody can tell us it's accurate or not, you know. The first thing's going to be having to uh, get these raised details off, so I'm going to work on sanding those those sidewalls down flat. So there's there's not much that you can see in here that's been done. Uh, I had to trim the instruments to fit, and they're actually, if you look on the back here, I, I included a little bit more. I was I was really I was really hampered by what's going to fit inside the the instrument combing right up there. Um, but when this is all assembled, this is kind of what we're going to be able to see inside the cockpit. So that's actually, you know, far and away better than than what we had. Um, and, you know, there's not, not a great way for me to get where I'm sitting right now a nice interior view. But it's actually pretty good. And when we add the seat in and you see where the seat's going to be located, uh, it's, not, it's not too bad. When you kind of figure where the seat is and where everything's, where the pilot would be sitting and, and stuff. So it's a lot better than the detail that was in there. And I'm actually going to use the uh, rest of the photo etch, you know, here and there as I can to spruce up the seat and maybe um, some interior of the canopy and stuff to make it look a little bit fancier as we go. So I'll use as much of it as I can. But other than that, this is going to be mostly from here on out straight from the box. So I've got the cockpit tub mounted in the upper fuselage half. We're going to get back to finishing that up. Um, so I'm going to start working with the exhaust and getting that in because really I can finish the rest of the cockpit once we get everything else mounted up in there. Just kind of want to get this to going. I don't even know if that's English, what I just said there. But. So this is pretty simple to put together. I mean, it's just a couple pieces that pop in. So there's really not much detail going on that goes into this. Um, let's put a little bit of glue. This is not my favorite glue to use. It's just what I had open and in front of me right now. I should really get the, uh, the good stuff out, but... It'll do for this build. You can almost kind of imagine, if you wanted to, that these would be thrust vectoring. You know, they could kind of tune that thrust up and down. If you, I mean, you know, just if you're if you're looking at the logic of how this works, if you're imagining that as you're as you're building, I'm not suggesting it does that or not. I'm just saying, interesting to think about. So we'll let this little subassembly dry real quick. While that's uh, while that subassembly over there is drying, we've got to mount this little glass window in the nose, and it you know whatever you want to imagine it does. 
whether it's uh, optics, rangefinder, designator, modern kits, you know, the, the ones that are basically throw glue in box and, and shake. They're great. But there's something about these old ones that require a lot of fiddling and, and you know, moving stuff around to make sure you got everything right. There's just this sense of accomplishment in these vintage kits because they're not easy to do. And you don't you don't get that on these, you know, super engineered new perfect kits. A lot more dry fitting on these old ones. So let's see. So that's gonna go like that. But I want to paint the inside of this lens first. So I mixed uh, about three parts uh, retributor armor and one part screamer pink, which gave me a really nice, exactly what I was looking for, which I don't know if you can really see it right here in this light, but it's just that slight tinge of reddish pink um, in, inside of a gold. It, it looks a lot like what you'd see in modern optics. I don't think that light on top of the camera is really going to help. You'll probably see it better when everything's finished, but it looks really good, and I was able to uh, use the paint around the around the corners too, which is going to help secure that in there in addition to that little bit of glue Which is nice. So I'm very happy with the look of how that turned out uh, That's really gonna look good for us um, When everything's finished, it's gonna give us the very nice perfect shiny Clear part to look like a glass lens um, With the painting on the inside and I'm gonna back it with black uh, gloss black coating so it's um, not opaque at all, and it really is going to look like uh, an imaging infrared kind of sort of lens that would be on any modern optic at all. It's going to take a little while to dry because I put it on so heavy, which is going to sort of slow us down for the next step, but it's going to be worth it. It's going to look pretty good. A minor detail, but on a kit like this that I keep saying is soft on detail, every minor detail we add really adds to the overall look of the kit. So I have finished this cockpit up, and I... I gave it a little bit more detail, and I don't think you're going to be able to see it very well with this camera, but I used some Mike Grant um, decals on the cockpit walls just to add a little bit. I used uh, decals from the Jet and the Prop Plane series. So we've got some additional gauges and placards and everything, you know, because it, it was really plain otherwise, but it looks pretty good. I used some of the photo etch uh, to dress up the seat. Um, just give some additional details in there. The control panel is looking, and you probably can't see it at this angle either. But it's in there. HUD is in there. I use some more of the photo etch just to, you know, give some some texture, some some surface to what's going on in there. Because there was nothing. There was nothing. Um, so with this all done, and there's, you know, again, I don't know if you can see it right now, but there's some dry brushing on the seat cushions and everything, just to give it a, a slightly worn look. But it, it's an, a real huge improvement compared to what comes in the kit. So with that done, we can start to move on to some other steps. Um, the next part is going to be um, putting basically the, the top and bottom of the fuselage together. And once that's done, things go together pretty quickly on this kit because um, there's just not a lot going on. I took off one of the wings just to dry fit it and look at it, and it reminded me it's got a real F-15 wing shape to it, you know? So, anyway, let me start assembling top and bottom, and then we'll take a look once we've got this kind of put together. <laughs> Well, so we got the uh, the fuselage together, okay? Um, it's taken shape. I want to say it's looking like a plane, but this doesn't look like any plane. This is another thing that would need, you know, triple redundant flight control computers to keep it in the air. But now that this is done, the rest of the build, like I said before, is actually pretty easy. It's just assembling the various pieces um, that, that go together. So I'm going to take some time to, um, well, I gotta sand down this a little bit and smooth it out. Um, but then we 
put all the external parts on and I mean it's a pretty simple job so let's get to it. After all that work, this is about where I'm going to be at to start um, painting, but there's a lot of filling and sanding that needs to be done. We've got joints that need it um, between the, of the wings. We've got this panel here, this area here. Uh, now this is a movable surface, so this doesn't need to be uh, filled and sanded. Um, but there's some cleanup work. This needs filling. I mean, so, and these aren't really fixed yet. I just, I had such a hard time. And, you know, the other two of these that I've built, I had the same problem where the angle wasn't even there. So I just put the landing gear on so I could work on getting the angle of the wings even. And at this point, I'm going to take what I can get. Like I, I had said this in the beginning, it takes some work, but it's a cool looking little plane. Basically everything else is, is best painted um, on the sprues. We have landing gear doors that need to be uh, painted and cut, you know, because I'm going to model this with landing gear down. But still, it's a, it's a lot easier to um, paint it when it's on the sprues, um, both external and internal, and then um, cut them. And then we've got the the speed brakes here, the air brakes, and we'll do the same thing, paint them external and internal. Uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll prime them and everything while they're on here. When I'm doing the actual painting of the uh, pattern, I'll put them, just place them in there. Really, that's it. I found an interesting historic note in here that I thought I'd share, which is right here that says that 
Historically, uh, the Soviets have traditionally had difficulty producing plastic surfaces with complex curves. But it basically goes on to say, by minimizing the use of curves and putting together a craft with a multiplicity of flat panels, the aircraft is still mission capable, but not as sleek as U.S. stealth designs. Now, this was in 1987. Remember what the actual U.S. stealth fighter looked like, the F-117, when it rolled out and was first seen by the public in 1989. And I think it's just funny that, you know, if you think about what the, the testers F-19A, what they thought the American stealth fighter was going to look like, compared to what the F-117 actually looked like, you know, and they were giving the U.S. production capability so much credit for making these complex curves, and the dumb old Soviets could only make flat panels. Um, it's just kind of funny. Uh, that's why I like reading those things. Anyway, uh, so cool kit. I'm really happy with the upgrading we did to the cockpit, uh, and you're going to be able to see all that through all the, the, the clear pieces that are here. That's, that's going to be fun. So join me next time where we will have a set of decals selected, where we will get everything uh, filled, sanded, We'll do priming, we'll do our pre-shading, we'll uh, get everything painted up, and I have a feeling that, you know, this is just going to be two parts for the build, because like I said, it's not that complicated. And we will see how this turns out next time.